Uh, welcome to our first of these uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic webinars. Um, we're super excited to, um, well, first of all, I don't know about you, I'm very excited to just connect with people, but this has been just a very interesting time. Um, I don't know if I introduced myself, but if I didn't, my name's Marie. Um, I serve as a secretary for the board, um, and we're very excited um, to introduce you to this wonderful panel. Let's start. I'm going to make sure that each one of them um, uh, introduces themselves. So, um, Jill, why don't we start with you? Please tell us um, where you are, what you're doing, how things are going. Well, uh, I'm Jill Burgett, University of Northern Colorado, and I am the Associate Director of Choral Studies there, also the Director of Choral Music Education. So I'm one of uh, probably like many of you, one of those people that wears two hats. Um, and we are in the process of converting our choirs, or I am at least. Well, um, it's an interesting process, isn't it? And that's part of the reason I volunteered for the panel is that I need to learn. And I think the best way to learn is to make someone a teacher. And so here I am on the panel. Um, I decided to set some goals right off the bat um, for myself as much as my students. My first goal was to keep it simple, not get it complicated, not get overwhelmed. My second one was to keep it human, and that really probably should have been my first goal. I think there's the human aspect that we lose um, in this whole issue that we're dealing with, so finding ways to keep it human, which is why, what um, spurred me on to actually move forward with, with this process of getting my choir online. Um, thirdly, I wanted to make it worth their time. I think it's really easy to come up with um, gap fillers that may not really be worth their time. So as I'm working through this, I'm finding ways to, to really address that. And then to make it flexible so that um, we're using um, various systems or platforms that we're already comfortable with rather than a lot of new knowledge and upstart. So um, very early in the process, I've already met with my student leaders in my ensembles and, um, and we're connecting, which has been really important. Thanks so much, Jill. Um, hey, since you brought up different platforms and systems, uh, Miguel, if you are able to, um, whilst we're doing introductions to throw out that poll that we had discussed about all the different um, platforms that um, are available to us and it's just be, it would just be interesting to see um, the demographic of, you know, are we using Zoom? Are some of us um, mandated to use other systems like WebEx, Canvas, things like that? So um, you might see a poll come at you on your screen, um, but while Miguel um, handles that, um, Amanda, uh, you wanna introduce yourself, talk about what you're doing? Sure, so my name is Amanda Quist and I am new at the University of Miami, uh, Frost School of Music, Director of Choral Activities here. And um, I found out kind of like most of us very recently that I was going to have to become a problem solver with ensembles while I was at the ACDA Southern Division Conference. Things kind of went from you can meet if there are 50 of you to no, you can't meet, but you do have to meet online to you can't meet at all. You know, so um, where we are at the Frost School is that because the, the class uh, classes for our ensembles are one credit, we've met the required number of hours. And so we aren't required to meet with our ensembles anymore. The students can receive credit for the course at this point. So the question for me then becomes, um, do I just say, great, see everybody in the fall? Do I make an effort to stay connected with them, which is what I would like to do? Um, and what are the best ways to do that? And as um, uh, we just mentioned, as she'll just mention, um, making it meaningful and useful for students and not busy work and um, just sort of negotiating all of that. So that's sort of where we are at the Frost School. And my colleagues in the orchestra and um, band departments are, they are just essentially saying, I'll see you guys in the fall. And they're not really uh, doing too much. My colleague in opera is staying engaged. But again, all of us are at this point uh, not under any requirement to meet with our, with our ensembles. Excellent. Thanks so much. And then um, Brandon, um, could you um, introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon Williams, um, Assistant Professor of Choral Music and Choral Music Education at Rutgers in New Jersey. And similar to Jill and Amanda, we um, just came off of a performance at um, Eastern ACDA, 
where we put in a lot of extra time and rehearsals and extended rehearsals. So we are, again, a combination of what you both just said. We're not under an obligation to meet with students. We can just say we've met the required uh, number of hours for being a one credit class. So we can go on, but I am choosing to still engage, um, not in anything that's graded, but I've given them some something to work on and, uh, and have created a forum in which uh, we can engage with, with each other and still have some kind of connection and growth. And my main premise has been to focus on the process. I mean, st strolling through social media, so many people have shared their sense of loss and greed, uh, not greed, uh, grieving um, with um, losing their performances. And it seems very product oriented. The concert's over, my concert's over. And I, we put a lot of work into that and that's totally understandable. But my goal has been to think about process so they can grow in independently. Again, a lot of my students are non-music majors. So hopefully this is something I can create, something that's going to help them grow and be more independent. So when we come back in the fall, they've been able to engage um, in a different way and bring that, that strength to um, what we do in the fall. And then Stephen, why don't you talk um, and introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Caldwell, uh, DCA at the University of Arkansas. Uh, we have six performing choirs there, two of which uh, sang at Southwest ACDA the week before we were shut down. Um, and so when I was discussing with colleague Jeff Murdoch, we decided that those two ensembles had given multiple concerts and had performed at the conference. So they had fulfilled their one credit obligation. So we kind of shut each of those down. Uh, but we still had four other ensembles that had not given any performance, uh, which was listed as part of the requirements of the course in the syllabus. And so um, for the other courses, all I did, because uh, they didn't make it to their concert, was created uh, an online submission where they all had each of their parts for the Arkansas alma mater. And I had them with a click track and, uh, and a pitch track and a video of me conducting. And I had them all submit their videos. Uh, of them singing the alma mater, and then I'm going to spend what will be the next month or so to hash that together into the uh, into a minute and twenty yeah into about a minute of twenty seconds of um, of virtual choir esque type of situation to make an alma mater, and that will serve as their final project. They have all done that now, so now I have 160 some tracks that I have to work on, and now all of our performing ensembles have completed and are essentially shut down for the remainder of the semester. Um, so uh, I'm so glad that Stephen brought up, well, um, he talked a lot about the product and we're, uh, we're as we were having our meeting, we, I think we probably would have a consensus um, in our pre-meeting that Stephen seems to be the very tech savvy one of all of us. Um, but um, hopefully you saw um, uh, the poll about what platforms we're using. Um, Stephen did talk about um, what is required um, as far as credit hours. So uh, something that we were curious about that will lead the discussion um, is I know that some of us uh, ha might have uh, administrations who have said that we fulfilled the one credit hour with all the performances and everything. It's a wash. Um, you don't have to run choir anymore. Um, we're going to be putting out a poll to see if that is you, if you're one of those people who um, uh, have uh, are not expected to continue a class. Um, I think the poll is up right here, or you might not have that where you are still expected to continue the course as a class. Um, so if that is you, please do um, uh, fill out the poll. And um, from what I saw in the last poll, um, it seems that that uh, Zoom is the predominant platform as to what we're using, which I think makes a lot of sense from what I've discovered about its original sound capabilities. Let's move to our first topic. Um, we, we did want to discuss.